Assalamualaikum and good morning to Dr. Dayang. Today my group will be presenting general reflection entitled Biohydrogen Production from Autoclave Fruit and Vegetable Waste by Dry Fermentation Under Thermophilic Condition. Next. As an introduction, organic fraction of municipal solid waste are keep increasing every year. So to solve this problem, we can generate energy by anaerobic digestion. From the process, we can produce hydrogen. Hydrogen has high energy content in the term of fuel and only produce water in combustion process. It can generate from fossil fuel and renewable resources such as biomass. In the study, dark fermentative bacteria can be used. It are used in the study because it can oxidize carbohydrates to produce hydrogen molecule. Next. Biomass is a potential waste. However, dignose cellulosic are recalcitrant for biodegradable unless use suitable pretreatment method. So autoclaving is an ideal method because there are no chemical use and preserve the nutrient. The substrate should reach in carbohydrates and low in content, nitrogen content. So uh, which are fruits and vegetables. We are is because uh, it has a high moisture content, biodegradability, low total solid and high volatile solid content. Next. For the temperature, uh, in the study, they use under thermophilic condition because it can inhibit the growth of hydrogen consuming microorganism and it is possible to treat directly the hot industrial influence. Lastly, dry fermentation are more prefer preferable for anaerobic fermentation because we can use smaller reactor volume, easy to handle and lose, use less water. Next. The objective of, the of this study are to investigate the dry fermentation under thermophilic condition to observe the effect of pretreatment of fruit and vegetable waste on biohydrogen production. Next. For the method, we use dry fermentation experiment that is uh, using autoclave and non-autoclave. Next. For autoclave, wet, wet was first chopped and grinded using a grinder and autoclave, while for the non autoclave, was chopped, grinded, and fed directly without any further treatment. Next. First step is a steel reactor filled with the 4.3 liter sludge from the biogas along with the concentrated vessel medium. Then the working volume made up with the food and vegetable waste pre hydrolyzed liquid fraction and remaining volume with distilled water to reach a liter. Then a steep flush for a few minutes with argon. Next. This is the composition of the basal medium that was used. Next. Then the dry fermenter basket was either filled with the autoclave and non autoclave food and waste vegetable and mixed with preheated in a film and 40 times basal medium and placed inside the air. Then the air purged with argon. Next. During the feeding day, the lachette from the DF drained to the lachette collection and then introduced into ST and argon was flushed through the DF. Next. For each day, a gas sample was collected from the outlet sampling pot of the ST and DF using a gas tie Hamilton string. And for the 10 ml of liquid sample from ST and DF were withdrawn. Next. This is the analytical method. For the gas phase hydrogen concentration measured by CNN0 and gas chromatograph, and for the soluble metabolite analyzed by GC equipped with a flame ionization detector. Next. And for the liquid sample, was centrifuge and filter using a nylon string filter and acidify using orthophosphoric acid. And for the soluble chemical oxygen demand, determined using H HLCK114 COD kit. And for the ammonium ion concentration, determined using a spectroquan ammonium test kit. Okay. Uh, for the result, it is split into autoclave and non autoclave. Next. For the autoclave, uh, the hydrogen pr produced was uh, 17,034 uh, 17, uh, nml with a yield of 37.19 mn and ml hydrogen per GBC, GBS. Maximum daily hydrogen pro production was 9,108. This rate decreases after initial fermentation. 
um, metabolites produce were uh, acetic and isobutyric acid with their uh, maximum concentration measured were uh, 7,366 and 7,662 mg per liter. The total sugar concentration in the stir tank at the start of, of the experiment were 19,515 milligrams per liter, which then reduced to 1,000 milligrams uh, per, uh, per liter within a day. Uh, it con uh, stabilized after the fourth day with the concentration in the stir tank and the dry fermenter, uh, ranging from 450 to 560 and 7,000 to 9,000 milligrams per liter, respectively. Next. For the non-autoclave, uh, maximum hydrogen production was uh, 6,684 and the yield was 20.81 uh, nanomilliliter hydrogen per GVS. The concentration uh, uh, for acetic acid and isobutyric acid was 10,535 and 10,548, which is uh, in, uh, 42 to 43% increase and the total sugar concentration in liquid fraction was also measured periodically and maximum year, uh, the concentration of 18,436 milligram per liter was obtained on the second day from the dry fermenter. So for this discussion, accumulation of high concentration of BFA and ammonia can be detrimental to the microbial community. To solve the problem, feeding tanks need to be installed to wash out the accumulated BFA that can cause pH drop in the duct fermentation. Another one is spraying the inoculum over the duct fermentation to attain more buffering capacity. There are two parameters study which are the feed inoculum ratio and the temperature. Next. Under feed inoculum ratio, higher inoculum is better as more microbes available, but it can lead to instability of system. Hence, 6.98 is used. This also can yield more biogas. Leachate recirculation is important to distribute the nutrient and microbes. Accumulated hydrogen must be removed to prevent the consumption by the homoacetogen. Next. For the temperature, it must be at 50 degrees. 55 degrees Celsius, this is to allow faster hydrolysis as it is the red limiting step. As autoclave waste favorites so solubilization of complex waste biomass, this can improve the hydrolysis of waste and enhance the biohydrogen production. Next. Uh, for the reflection, there is an advantage and the limitation that can be found in this journal. For the advantage, it helps to reduce the municipal waste, solid waste. From the solid, uh, from the wasteland. A second, it can produce a clean energy from fruit and vegetable waste, which produce hydrogen gas. A third, it's able to show the effect of autoclaving process in food solid waste management. The limitation that can be found are the limit type of fruit and vegetable waste that we use. Uh, this general use a custom made dry fermentation system, and it. The accumulation of metabolites such as ammonia and production of can influence the production of hydrogen gas. The suggestion that can be used to improve the hydrogen gas production is to use the local fruit that is easily found in Malaysia to, and second, co digest the waste with protein and calcium rich substrates such as skeleton solid waste and pepper mill sludge. And third is to use the feeding tank to predictably feed the microbe into the mixture. And for conclusion, the thermophilic autoclave improves the production of hydrogen and further atomization are needed to commercialize the process. That's all from us. Thank you.